Hello and welcome to the shop. Today I'm going to be turning a blank for you that I picked up at the Mid Ohio Valley Pen Turners Gathering. It is a Route 66 themed blank. It is label cast in Alumalite. I do not know who the artist is. It was one of the giveaways or door prizes. Um, it came with a pen kit and that pen kit is one of the gear shift kits. Now I've never turned this kit before so I was fairly excited about uh, about getting a chance to turn that kit. I went online because obviously I didn't have bushings for it and I looked up the bushings. I knew that it was a 3 8 inch tube. The bushings are 0.495 uh, millimeters. So I went to my bushings and I'm going to show you this because I often get asked, Bob, how do you store your bushings? This is how I store my bushings. I buy these little compartment containers and I put on the container the bushing, um, the bushing numbers so I know which bushings are in which compartment. And I just went through looking for any bushings that were a 3 8 inch bushing or for a 3 8 inch tube. And uh, I used my calipers and I found one, I found a set of bushings that came out to 0.496 millimeters. They were for the Majestic Squire. Now, there could be a margin of error there. It could be that the Majestic Squire requires a 4.5 millimeter and uh, it just worked out that way, but I'm super excited because they are close enough to where I'm going to be able to make this kit and I'm not going to have to uh, put out the money to buy another set of bushings. So let's get this blank over to the lathe and let's get turning. I've got the blank chucked up on the lathe. I'm going to be turning between centers and I want you to know that these Majestic Squire bushings, it's an older set of bushings. Uh, you can tell they haven't had a lot of use on them and they're not even really scuffed up uh, and they were 0.496 from end to end, so I feel good about that. But even though they are standard bushings, I'm gonna go ahead and turn them between center. And what I did is I fired up the lathe. It's running at full speed and I laid my parting tool on the bushings. And hear how smooth it's running? As long as it's running smooth, I am centered and I should be able to turn between centers with standard bushings, no problem. I'm gonna go ahead and get my safety gear on and we're gonna begin turning this blank. That has got to be a Luma light because, as I said before, it just turns amazingly well. The blank is down to the bushings on both ends. I'm happy with the shape. We're going to kind of clean up some of the uh, fuzzy Luma light hanging all over the place. And uh, we'll go ahead and get our micro mesh pads out and start polishing this blank. I'm breaking out a brand new set of polishing pads for this project. And when you get these, they come with a sort of a cheat sheet that tells you this color is this grit. And this is also the order that you want to use them in. So be very careful because they were not in the proper order in my package. So I went ahead and ordered them properly by the color chart. And then on the end of the blanks, since brown is the first one you want to use, I went ahead and put a single dot on it, two, three, four, on down to nine dots. And I did the same thing on the other side of the pads because the next step is I'll cut these in half. You don't need this large of a pad, cut them in half and uh, just use one set until it's used up and then flip to the next set. I've got brand new micro mesh pads now, a fresh container of water, new paper towel to wipe the slurry away, and we're just gonna start polishing this blank until it looks amazing. Working the micro mesh, you can kind of see behind it, see that white slurry? That's what you're gonna get as you're polishing and you just want to, especially when you do the Alumalite blanks, you just want to build up a good slurry. Not so much if you're polishing a blank with a CA finish because you don't want to take your finish off, but with these blanks, you really want to get in there and work it. And you can see I'm building up a really good slurry. Once you're done, just kind of quickly wipe your blank off and you're ready to go to the next pad. I'll go ahead and shut the video off, finish polishing, and we'll come back and take a look at how this blank turns out. I just finished polishing with the micro mesh and I'm really happy with how this blank looks. 
I want to point out something. I did mention earlier that these are not turn between center bushings. They work just fine. However, if you plan to turn between centers, I do recommend getting the real turn between center bushings. They've got a 60 degree groove cut in them, so they fit perfectly on your uh, live center and your dead center. And uh, these, because they don't have that conical shape inside of them, you know, you could get a little bit uh, off kilter and mess your blank up. But I was willing to take a chance just to try it out, and it did work. I'm going to get this on a standard mandrel, get my buffing wheels on the lathe. We're going to buff it up and uh, see what it looks like. I've got my buffing wheels on the lathe. I'm still running at 1100 RPMs. That seems to be just a really good speed uh, when it comes to polishing with the micro mesh or buffing with the buffing wheels. Sometimes I will bump the speed up just a little bit, and it does help. I think, uh, I, 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 I don't know, it just depends on the blank. With, with an acrylic blank or, or an Lumalite blank like this, I have no issue running faster. And let's go ahead and just do it for fun. I'll bump up to about 2,000 RPMs here. And I think the heat that the wheel builds uh, allows the uh, rosin to really just sort of work the blank. And I don't know, my theory is, and I may be wrong, but my theory is it sort of melts the surface. And then as, as you roll it, the surface cools and it just sort of smooths it out. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know, but that's what I have in my head. And, uh, you know, I keep telling myself that, so <laughs> for what it's worth. This is really looking nice. This blank looks really nice. I wish I knew the artist who created it. I would give them credit. Uh, unfortunately, I do not, so that's kind of a shame, but uh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Let's get this over to the bench and get it pressed into a kit. I'm over at the bench where I like to press my pins together, and this pin looks to be very simple. I mean, you've got the cap to the pin, and you've got a nib. Now, I did notice that the nib will unthread, and for the purpose of pressing, I'm going to go ahead and unthread it, and we will put the, the end of the nib against this rubber bumper here, and then I'm going to use, you've seen me do this before, I'm going to use a bushing on the back half of the pin to sort of protect it because I just don't want to press off and, uh, you know, cause any damage to the blank. Okay, let me give myself a, a little bit. There we go. We'll press the nib piece in. Looks really nice. I've got a nice fit all the way around. I've gone ahead and opened up all of the uh, spacers on my press because this is going to be relatively long once I get the uh, cap on here. I want to make sure I line this up as best as I can with the line on the back of the, the blank. Oh yeah, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna need all the distance I think. All right, before I start pressing let me just adjust a little bit. Always want to be really careful with this because this can make or break the blank. There we go. There we go. I was a little nervous about that. It started to kind of go crooked for a second. Oh, wow. Real nice fit. Let me get that closer to the camera for you. Look at that. It is just an incredibly smooth transition. Really, really happy with that. This, this turned out nice. Those bushings were perfect. All right, let's get the ink installed. Once again, we'll unthread the nib. Got a little rubber ball on the end of the ink refill. Put our spring on there. Drop this into the pin. Whoops, about shot that across the room. Wouldn't be the first time. I bet you all have had the same, same thing happen. There we go. Okay, there we are. Huh, that's very, very interesting. Okay, let's take a look at this. This first section back here, you know, the ink doesn't move. You can go about halfway, but the ink doesn't come out. You have to go all the way down either side and lock the gear shift to eject your ink. So that's kind of neat. Kind of a cool pin. Uh, all right, well, that was a lot of fun. Take a look at that. It really turned out nice. All right, let me turn this camera around and we'll close this video out. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I had a good time turning this pin. It was a lot of fun. Like I said, I've never turned this kit before, so it's kind of cool to uh, actually hold one and turn one and see how it works. 
and I really enjoyed working with it. And I'm gonna let you know what I'm gonna do with this. Um, I have a guy that I follow on YouTube. His name's Dane Paul Thompson. He has two segments on his channel and they are Burn Down and the second segment is um, What's Happening. And I really like Dane. He's, he's just a guy, he works out of his garage, paints cars, lives out in California. And um, he has, a, I think it's a 66 Chevelle. And what he's trying to do is on a shoestring budget, just a normal average guy trying to build this car. He takes it out on the weekends and he races it. And it's a lot of fun just to watch him try to, you know, on a budget, build power for this car so that he can go out and just have more fun on the weekend. And it's just, it's just a good fun channel and I really do enjoy it. So if you're into hot rodding, you're into old cars, please take a look at the comment section below. Get the link for Dane's channel, go check him out. And if you like what you see, subscribe and send him a comment and say, hey, you know, Bob Blanford sent me from RJB Woodturner because he and I have already had a few communications. I think he's a pretty cool dude. I like him and uh, I'd like to help promote his channel and help him grow. So check him out and let, let me know what you think. And that's all I got for you today, guys. I want to thank you for joining me. I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon and have a great evening.